Hello ladies and gentlemen and coders of all ages. My name is John and in this video I'm going to walk you through everything you need to do to install Umbraco V9 and configure it for optimal development experience. Now Umbraco V9 was released very recently and it was a big deal. Now, the reason why it's a big deal is it's the first version of Umbraco to work with .NET Core. And I have been waiting for a really good .NET Core CMS to come out since about 2017. So this is super exciting for me at least. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up and configuring SQL, making sure that we can do mixed mode authentication. We're going to set up IIS, create a website, make sure it's got the right permissions, show you how to use a host file so you can access the site via a web browser. And then finally, we're going to install Umbraco and a sample site. Now, the good news is this process is fairly simple. It should take you about 10, 15 minutes. And afterwards, you should hopefully have a working Umbraco website on your PC. Now, obviously, this is .NET Core and we could install Umbraco on a Mac. However, I am guessing that most Umbraco developers at the moment are Windows guys at heart. So we'll stick with the Windows Visual Studio. Beautiful. Now, if you haven't come across one of my videos before, my name is John and I do loads of videos about Umbraco, CMS, stuff like Optimizely, Jamstack, developer productivity. This video is going to be the first in a series in Umbraco V9 videos. So we're probably going to do a course. It's probably going to be about how to upgrade a website from V8 to V9 and also show you some different things like project structure, best practices, all of that beautiful stuff. So if you're interested in that type of content and you want to be an absolute legend and do me a solid, hit the subscribe button right now. Now, assuming you've done that, let's start and look at the prerequisites that you need to get running with Umbraco V9. Umbraco CMS as a product needs a database to run. So whenever a content editor creates some content, whenever you add some document types, this will be stored within a database. Now, when you run through the Umbraco installer by default, it will install the database on the file system, usually within the app data folder. Now, this is OK for running a sample site. However, it's not very good for constant development work. It's not going to be very easy for you to start querying your databases to make backups, to make exports. So ideally, what you want to do is install your database in SQL Server and SQL Server with SQL Server Management Studio. So this is free. Head over to the Microsoft site, as you can see on the screen in front of you. Just make sure you go for the SQL Server option, which has the Management Studio. Assuming that you now have SQL Server installed and Management Studio, it's time to configure the SQL Server to allow our installer to work. So what's going to happen is that when we run through the Umbraco installer, it's going to need to talk back to our SQL Server instance to install all the database tables. However, by default, Microsoft does not allow these types of connections. So what we need to do is create a username and password, which we can add into our connection string. We need to enable SQL Server to allow these types of connections. We also need to create a blank database so the Umbraco installer will be able to install the table somewhere. So this is pretty super simple. It's going to take us a few seconds. All we need to do first is connect to the server. So click on this little plug. From here, you'll have the option to log into your server using Windows authentication mode. This is what you want to do the first time around. Quickly zoom in so you can see it. Now, after you zoom in, you'll have access to the server. Right click on your server and select properties. Now, from here, as you can see, hopefully that there's a little security tab. So this is as zoomed as, as I can get. Now, in security, Click on it at the top, you'll see this server authentication option. Now, by default, Windows will ship with Windows authentication at mode only. And what you want to do is enable mixed mode authentication. So SQL Server and Windows authentication mode. So clicking on OK, basically, that's now going to mean that the Umbraco installer should be able to talk back to our instance. The next thing we need to do is create a database user that we can add to our connection string within our application. So this is done within the security tab. All you need to do is open up security in loggings. Now in here, you could right click on it and do new login. However, there's a few jumps and hurdles you have to jump through if you try and create a new account. I find it much easier for development just to use the inbuilt SQL Server admin account, which is called SA. 
Now, the thing you need to worry about when you're doing this for the first time is right click on SA, go to properties. Now, one thing which can trip you up, as you can see, we have this little status. Clicking on status, what you want to do is make sure that permissions to connect to database engine is grant and also that login is enabled. If you don't do this, you ain't logging in. Now, going back to the general tab, you can see that you can also change the password and confirm password. So if you do not know what your SA password is, I strongly recommend that you add something in. Now, after enabling your account, it's my recommendation that you test that all the connection and all your configuration works before doing anything else. So doing that super simple, using the little cross plug, angry plug, let's call it. We um, log out of SQL and then let's log back in by clicking on the plug again. Now this time when we're logging in with our authentication mode, instead of doing Windows, we want to change it to SQL Server and I'm going to use my SA account to log in. And if everything's gone According to plan, I should be able to log back into the server using that username and password. Remember them because you'll be needing it within the installation process later on. Now, the last step that we need to do is create ourselves a new blank database to add in and bracket. So in the databases option, right click new database. And then hopefully from here, you can see that we've just got to put a database name and an owner. So database name could be anything that you want to. I'm gonna call mine Umbraco9. And the owner is that database user that you just configured. So I'm gonna say mine is SA. Clicking OK, that is all our SQL configuration done. After installing SQL Server, my next go-to step is normally to make sure that the web server installed correctly, then to create a website so we can access our sample site later, and also to configure a host name. So let's do all of that stuff now. So the first thing we want to do is head over to Windows and just do turn Windows features on or off. And from here, you'll see that we have this Internet Information Services. So you need to make sure that this is ticked. You will need to make sure that World Wide Web Services ticked. Now, what I recommend normally is you have ASP.NET 3.5, 4.8, all the filters, the extensions. I also recommend that in HTTP features, you make sure that you have HTTP redirection. But basically, you need IS installed, otherwise you ain't got no web server. Now, after you have IS installed, you should be able to access it. Again, if you don't know how to do that, it's just internet information services. You can see it right there, ba-boom. Now, after you have IS up and running, you should get an interface like this. Now, what we want to do is create ourselves a new website. Now, at the moment, we don't have any web files, so don't worry about it too much. We're basically doing all the setup tasks now. We're going to configure it a little bit later on as well. So what we want to do is go to the Sites tab, click on Add Website. Now, from here, we need to create ourselves a site name. I'm going to call mine Embraku9. Now, this can be anything you want because all it's going to do is appear in here. No one else is going to see it. So make sure it's descriptive and you know what it is. Now, the physical path is going to be where our web files are going to be located. Now, we haven't got any web files yet. So just pick the folder that you're going to put your web files in later on. So I've got an amazingly entitled Umbraco v9 folder. Nice. Now, the next thing is we're going to configure our host name. Now, as you know, when you're typing a URL into a browser, your browser goes off to the internet, tries and finds everything, does a load of magic and gives you a web page. Now, when you're hosting a site locally on a web server, instead of the web browser going off to the internet, you need to configure your website and your server. So basically when the request gets made, it routes to IIS rather than the internet. And this is done through a host name. So for us, let's call this Unbraku9. Again, it can be anything you want. Now, if I just typed Umbraco9 into a web browser, I'm just gonna go to Google because I haven't configured anything. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we configure our host file. So what you wanna do is open up a host file. You need to make sure that we're doing this in admin mode, otherwise it's not going to work. That's why you saw that little prompt. Now let's just close this one down. What we want to do is open up our host file. So open file. And what we want to do is go to C, Windows, scroll down, and then there should be a little folder in here called System32. 
open up system 32 and in here we should see a folder and that folder should be called drivers and then in here we should have one called etc and then in here you can see that we have this hosts so open this host file up and you're going to see something which looks like this now i've got loads of sample sites on my website so i've got to have loads and loads of stuff that you're not going to have but what you want to do in here is make a mapping so 127.0.0.1 which is local host and it needs to point to umbraco 9. save now in a minute when we try and access umbraco 9 we should get redirected to our website in is because there's no files there at the moment we'll get an error however the main thing is that we don't get redirected to the internet now let's quickly test out that host name to make sure it works so i'm just going to do http colon slash slash and about 9. and as you can see instead of the request going out to the internet i'm actually getting this beautiful error message and this is what you want to see now sometimes you can see here that we've got this 40314 error and if we do a quick google what does this mean? It means we've got a permission error and we actually haven't got any web files yet. So the permissions error, we can actually fix right now. So go back to your IIS and on your website, right click on it. So let's zoom in so you can see it. So we've got our website, right click on it. And then you can see we have this edit permissions. So clicking on edit permissions, that was a fail. Edit permissions, go to security. And what we want to do is make sure that we have the correct permissions here to allow access to the folder. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. So to add in permissions, the easiest way to do it is click on this edit button and then click on add. And what you want to do is type in everyone. Now, when you click on everyone here, you need to make sure that the full control is enabled and then clicking apply. Now, in terms of security and best practice, this isn't the best practice. However, this is the easiest way to get a site up and running without bumping into issues. If you want to be you know, really pedantic about your permissions, you could go back in here and then clicking on find now. What will happen is you'll get a big list of all the options you can add. And if I expand and zoom in, now the ones that you're gonna to want to add is there should be one called network service that's always a good one and then basically anything which has got iis in it so iis i users or anything which is related to your application pool basically allow that and you also just need to make sure that you enable this full control so things can read and write we have finally got to the money segment a oh, year this is the bit where we're going to install our umbraco v9 site after that we're going to install a sample site and everything's going to be amazing now, the good thing about Umbraco V9 is that we no longer need to install a website via Visual Studio, installing a blank ASP.NET empty project and installing everything via NuGet. Instead, everything can be done through the terminal. This is really cool and it means it's much quicker to install things. So if you head over to the Umbraco website, you can see that there's only three commands that you need to run in order to install the site. Now I have got an accompanying tutorial on how to set up Umbraco V9 on my website. However, if you get stuck, lost, blah, 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 you know that you can head over here, do a bit of a copy and paste and everything will be amazeballs for you. So the first thing I wanna do is copy this first command. So open up a terminal. We're in my Umbraco directory that we created earlier. So we just wanna do a dot net new dash I space Umbraco dot templates with an S and there's a dot in there. Now, because my templates are already installed, I'm gonna see a slightly different output than you're gonna see. However, this is going to now install the bits that we need to install our project. So again, we can copy the next command. Let's just clear it, so it's at the top. So our next command is now .NET, space new, space umbraco, space dash dash name, and then we need to give our project name. So I'm gonna call mine um, umbraco9. And off it's doing its thing. Now, if we look in our Umbraco directory, you can see that it's created all the files within a subdirectory. 
that don't fly with me. Instead, I want all of my files in my root directory. So let's just move that. Now that's pretty much all of the commands you need to know, just those two. If we go back to our terminal, we can now just do a dot net run. And this is gonna launch the Umbraco installer. Now, because we're going through here, we're gonna have to use a local web server. So as you can see, when through .NET run, so when this fires up, as you can see, you're gonna have this now listening on port. You wanna copy the bottom URL. So I'm gonna do 10.333. Yours will probably be different. So now what we wanna do is just type that into a web browser. And what should happen now is the Umbraco installer should now launch. So this is the exciting part. So the first thing we need to do is install the default admin URL that we're gonna to use to access the CMS. So mine's just gonna be this. Now password, I'm gonna do password, password, kaboom. Now the next thing we want to do is configure our database. And this is where we want to point it to SQL Server. So remember when we did all of this stuff a little while ago, we had all our connection details. This is the bit that we use to connect to SQL. I always find it's much easier to do some copy and pasting because otherwise I'll just end up doing some typo. So we've got our dot slash SQL Express. Our database name is gonna be Umbraco9 if you remember. Umbraco9. Our login is gonna be SA and our password is going to be password. And if we do continue, let's see what happens. Now, I will warn you when I've gone through this installation process, sometimes I have seen an error. And if I've seen an error, all I've done is gone through and rerun the installer. And sometimes that seems to be really important. So one of the things, if you're using SQL Server, again, make sure you follow the tips we did earlier, make sure that you can connect, copy and paste your SQL Express, use SQL authentication, use your username and password, log in here and prove that this works. Because if it fails to work in this step, that's probably the reason. Now, as you can see, the installation process took, what, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. We're now into Umbraco itself. We're looking beautiful. We're in the back end. Now, unfortunately, if we look at the website ourselves, just in a local host, we're gonna see this welcome to Umbraco. We ain't got no pages. We ain't got no document types. Now, if you're brand new to Umbraco, starting from a blank slate is very tricky. So instead, we can install one of the sample sites really, really easily. So what you wanna do is within the back end, go to package ages, or pack ages, pack ages. And then in pack ages, go over to the start kit section, click on start kit, and you can see we have the start kit. And it's been downloaded 200,000 times. It's been written by the guys from Umbraco. So this is what I recommend you get started on. Now, as you can see, top right, we have install instructions, and it's just giving you the terminal command that you need to run, which is .NET add package umbraco.thestat kit. So let's open up our terminal again, clear that, zoom in. So as you can see, we've just got our .NET add package umbraco.thestat kit. Kaboom! This is gonna install everything for us. Took seconds. I've got to admit, I am really impressed on how fast Umbraco 9 is. And now we can just do our dot net run. Now, if the demo gods love me, I'm going to be using exactly the same local host port. And now if I do a refresh, what should hopefully happen is we should see the Umbraco sample site. So as you can see now, we've got a beautiful website we go back to our back end and remember you can access the back end just doing slash umbraco now if we do a reload go back to our content section over here don't show me this tour as you can see now we have some document types if we go into our settings we've got document types here that you can play around with so now you've got a really great base to start working with umbraco v9 so this has been so much easier compared to older version of Umbraco. It's also much quicker. So I'm super impressed and I hope you are too. 
So we're nearly end the voyage. At the moment, we can still access Umbraco through our local host. The last thing we need to do, just to make sure that we can use our host name to access our sample site. So we've already done most of the laborious setup task. However, if you remember, we left things with a 403.14 error. Now, this was because we need to configure things slightly differently for .NET Core. Now, for those of you who've been installing Umbraco for ages and hosting it in iOS, things are a little bit different here. Now, first of all, just because we have the .NET Core runtime installed, we also need the Windows hosting bundle. So this is really important. If you don't have this thing, you can see that it's adding in a module within iOS. Things ain't gonna work for you. So installing our Windows hosting bundle is super important. Now, let's just do a clear here. Now, once you install this thing, it's not gonna work by default. You are gonna have to do a little bit of magic. So we're gonna have to start and stop the server. And you can do that with a net stop was dash y. This is gonna stop our IS for you. Now, as you can see, it's all stopping for us. I'll zoom in so you can see the command. So that's net stop was slash y. And then the way to start IS is just a net start and then it's the w3 w s v s v c so w3 w s v c start w3 s v c there we go start i'll zoom in so you can see that so start w3 s v c so this means that IS has our module that we need. I'll link to the download in the tutorial below. Now, after we have this up and running, we can go back to our web server. So what we wanna do now is go to this application pool setting right here. So application pool settings. So clicking on this, you should see a corresponding entry for your website. So mine is called Anabraco9. Now, what you want to do is click on it and then do advanced settings, advanced. And from here, we want to change the .NET CLR version. Now, when you install things, what will likely happen is that it might say v4 or v2. This is for the .NET framework. We want to use the new modern stuff. So you need to make sure that we're using new managed code. So no managed code, clicking OK. Now, one of the issues we need to address is that the way that the files work in .NET Core is slightly different. In the old MVC world, we could just point our IIS to our web server, job done. However, in our new world, we need to do a .NET publish. Pa -bam. I don't know how to spell .NET publish. Now you can do this through the Visual Studio codes and I might do that in another video. However, as you can see through the command prompts, we've done a published directory, which is now in bin debug.net 5.0, the publish. So if we open up this folder, as you can see here, we're gonna have all of our usual files. And most importantly, we've got, you know, our Umbraco 9 exe, we've got a web config, all the bits that I us need to run. So now what we need to do is go back to our websites, click on our website entry right here, Umbraco 9. Now we just need to go manage websites, advanced settings. And then in here, we're gonna paste in our new location. So obviously if you're doing this in production, this is probably not the ideal way of doing it. However, this will make life easier for the time being. And then now, again, if the demo gods love me, when I click on this, I should get rid of that 403 error and we should see our beautiful Umbraco sample site loaded. Huzzah! <laughs> so as you can see, this is everything you need to do to install Umbraco, all the dependencies, 10, 15 minutes, super simple to get up and running. Really impressed with how easy it is to get everything up and running in V9. Obviously, when you're setting things up in IS, things are slightly different compared to V8 or V7. However, you're a genius, you got this. I'm pretty sure you have anyway, maybe.
and that is everything that you need to know in order to install Umbraco and get it to work for development purposes. I think this is a super exciting time. Now, as I was saying at the beginning of the video, this is the start of an Umbraco 9 video series. In this series, I'm gonna be upgrading my current website, johndjones.com, which is written in V8 up to V9. So we're gonna go through all the steps of everything you need to do. Because this is a V9 video, I'm also gonna show you how to create a very basic sample site. So in there, we're gonna do things like create menus. We're gonna go through best practice techniques for naming folders and files, all that good stuff. Now, if there is anything that you want me to include in this series, please leave a comment below. This is your chance. These videos are for people like you. So leave some comments about what you'd like to see in this series, and I would very much appreciate it. So if you haven't subscri subscribed already, do that now. If you want to help me with the YouTube algorithm gods, please hit that like button because it actually helps my video get shown to more people. So I would very much appreciate that. Now, if you're as excited about me, about Umbraco V9, please leave your comments below. There is also optimizelycms.net and expect to see a video on that very shortly too. So this is like buses. Once one.net core CMS comes along, multiple comes along at the same time. So expect some exciting content coming up. Anyway, I hope you found some amazing value in this video. Hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are and happy coding.